And welcome to tonight's game between the Bloomfield Wildcats and the Bernie Mules in this Tri-County Conference matchup. I'm along with Lloyd Rice tonight. We've got Rick the Priest as our producer. Haley Stockton on camera tonight. And Lloyd, in the past three, two, past two games that we've done on YHC, over the past week, we've had Bernie and Dexter and Dexter and Bloomfield. Both of those games have been right. close. And we've got the other matchup tonight that's Bernie and Bloomfield. And they're and all three of these teams are the top three That's seeds right. going into the conference tournament coming up next week, and been close games throughout all, all or both of them, and including tonight, this should be a close one as well. Tough, tough time of year to uh, to play each other. Uh, great Stoddard County basketball going on. Um, nothing like last Friday night, as you can attest to. I know the officials that came down here said that uh, they were pretty sure there was some structural damage uh, <laughs> due to the crowd noise at times and stuff. That's just a lot of fun. Great atmosphere to play, um, especially if you're a Bernie uh, hosting those games. That's uh, right. Not yes. many people come into Bernie this time of year and get a win. It's hard. Um, I, I, I scratch my uh, <laughs> self a little note about I wonder what the uh, record for Bernie is at home in the last five, six, ten, twelve years. Um it, it's hard to come in here and uh, get get a win this time of year. It really is, and we're t I was talking to some sports writers before the game, and you know many expected Dexter to come in here and get a win, right. but they said the environment that's good for a good five oh, to ten points. And five that, ten, that, and those Bernie kids are a group of kids that are not going to give up that edge if they can help it at all, and they probably just flat out one of those games they wanted it just a little bit more. It was at home, the comforts of home, and, and the baskets are a little easier to shoot on and um, um, snuck out of here with a win. Sure. Settled the uh, conference seed meeting, of course, um, as it usually does, that Dexter Bernie games. Um, I, way more times than not, that settles the uh, first and second seed uh, for the conference tournament. And then more times than not, that, uh, that result will flip-flop the following week. That's right. And let's talk a little bit about this game. The Bloomfield Wildcats come in, and th this is the thing about the Bloomfield Wildcats, Lloyd. At times, they, they, they look like the best team in the county. Right. And other times, they look like, you know, probably at the bottom half of the that's county. Right. And that's the thing with Bloomfield. You don't know what you're going to get, but if you, if you end up running against the Wildcats on a night that they've got every facet of the game working in their favor, offensive, defensive, they're going to be a tough team to beat. And they can beat anybody in the county have, when, when Bloomfield's have really, on. really been looking for that third consistent score. At times it's been Vandiver. At times it's been Henson. But notice I'm saying at times, and then at times it's not been any of those guys. And um, in, in good high school basketball, you've got to have that third scoring option um, to, be, to be a good team and put it over the top consistency and, and beat other good teams. So um, that's what they're looking for tonight, and I've made myself some notes to keep, a, keep an eye on Henson, Vandiver, some of those other guys. Something about this old Jim Tyler, it is hard to, uh, to get that ball up and down the floor. They'll get to pressing right. you. Those cheerleaders seem close. The fans seem close. It's a uh, good old-fashioned high school gymnasium. Tough place to get a win. And for the starting line of Seth Hill at number 24. Number 33, Dylan Bader. We have number 50, a 6'1 senior, Mitchell Skaggs. Number 25, a 5'10 junior, Aaron Henson. And number 34, a six-foot-one junior, Zach Pounds. The Bloomfield Wildcats headed up by Dustin Hicks, assisted by Jason Carnes. Jason Carnes. <laughs> Got a little memory lapse there. And for the home, Bernie Mules. Starting number 12, a six-foot-two junior, Matt Eves. One of your keys last Friday night, you mentioned. really was. Number one, a five-nine senior, Cameron Shipman. Number fourteen, a five-foot-ten junior, Jesse Shelton. 
I think he's the difference night in, night out when they're good and when they're not at the top of their game. It's, it tends to ride on what he yeah. does with them. They can really make it go yep. for the mules. Number 40, Sammy Walker, six foot one senior. And number 44, six foot two senior, Jordan McGowan. And we're set up for this Stoddard County clash. And this year, at the top especially, the top three, you can top say Bloomfield, three. Bernie, and Dexter, they've been playing each other very close. And it'll be very interesting to see how this game That's turns right. out going into the tournament. Right. Not a lot of difference. Uh, what What's played next week could have a completely different turn out than what's played last week and that's the uh that's the way these three are going to go i think all year and this is you know two teams bernie they've been consistent all year right they've been having strong efforts night in and night out been playing well and bloomfield th that's where they struggled with inconsistency right. good play for four quarters and we'll see how that those styles contrast tonight we'll see how bloomfield can put it together a good effort against bernie tonight and here we go, it's Eves versus Bader, and Bloomfield comes away with the tip. Bader has absolutely been on fire the last uh, two, three, four games. Yeah, he's big, really turned it on. Big first of the year. 29 or so at Dexter, and um, big output uh, last uh Oh, get my dates right. Friday, maybe at Malden. Aaron Henson drives the lane, kicks it out to Pounds. Bloomfield very patient so far. Bernie's Bernie. playing a straight man-to-man -man against them to start. Brad will switch that up a lot against them. And that's one thing Bloomfield struggled with, too, is taking control of the ball. Yep and not turning it over, and that'll be a key in tonight's game. And they work it long enough to draw a foul on right. Cameron Shipman. That'll be his first. It's tough for high school kids to just keep working it, working it, uh, showing a lot of patience here. That's a full minute off the clock before the first shot goes up. And Skaggs with the first two of the game. Great patience there by the yeah. Wildcats. Well, that's a full-blown minute of the game. Um, that's, that's good ball movement, very patient. McGowan for three in the corner, no good. That's his spot he likes over there. I tell you, he's had a great year shooting from behind uh, the arc. There's no question that if um, – they were all like Jordan McGowan. Everybody would want to coach. Hardest worker in practice, your team leader, your vocal leader. Plays hurt, does, does whatever it needs to be done. Guards their best player, night in, night out. Mitchell Skaggs underneath again, gets it to go. Looks like Bloomfield's being very methodical on offense, getting the good look, and they've got two good looks early on with Mitchell right. Skaggs. And rebound Bader. Shelton can't get it to go in the paint. We're under six minutes now. Seth Hill puts up a deep three. Can't draw any iron. Over to the Mules. Kind of a stark contrast to the first two possessions. That's right. Coach Hicks is thinking that same thing if you saw him on camera. Shelton comes around, dips it out to Sammy Walker, looking for the pick and roll. The pick and roll's Skaggs worked very well. Early, yeah. That pick and roll's worked very well for the Mules, but a good defensive effort by Skaggs and the Wildcats. And trying to get it down to Skaggs again. Gets a little out of his reach. Turns it over to the Mules. And I think those are the turnovers that we've seen Bloomfield There's make lately. They, you know, it's just a simple dump down pass. It's not that they're getting overwhelmed defensively. That's right. It's just making the simple pass and not There's converting. no question Mitchell had his man posted and was wide open for the same two baskets he had earlier. Sammy Walker underneath. He gets caught, gets it out to Shipman. 
He'll drive it, dump down to Eves. He'll put it up the left side and good. Good pass. That's the thing about Matt Eves. Pass. He just seems to be at the right place at the that's right time, and that's where he picks up his points, and that, that's where you want him to pick up his points. You got good penetration by Shelton and Shipman a lot of the game, and we got a turnover by the Wildcats. Looks like a, as a legal screen or a pushing right. foul off the ball. And that'll be against Mitchell Skaggs, his first. Four and a half minutes remaining in the quarter. Shelton works to the right side, tries to get down to Walker, knocked away by Seth Hill. Shipman inbounds to Eves. It gets deflected away. Skaggs takes it away. It's up to Hill. He'll spin, puts it up. No good. Rebound good. McGowan. Good defense by McGowan. I didn't foul. You expect him to want to draw the charge and kind of talk Seth out of that one. Shovel with the ball now works against Hill. Looking for Shipman. He'll drive it baseline. And it's going to be kicked, and he'll stay with the Mules. And in for the Wildcats, that's Adam Vandiver. Mitchell Skaggs with a quick start, gets a breather. Got all four points for him. And uh, interior pass to Sammy Walker deflected, but he's fouled on the play. That goes against Adam Vandiver. Shelton over to McGowan. He'll put up the three. No good. That's one thing about McGowan. You've got to be you in his face. <laughs> Being on him is not him good and, enough. Him and Shipman, especially at home, they don't. you don't give them a step. That's one thing I've seen about McGowan this year. Being on him is not good enough. Right. You've got to be, have a hand straight in his face to keep him from putting it up. And a drive in by Seth Hill. Can't get it to go. McGowan gets it taken away by Hanson. Hence on to push it up. He goes against Shelton, and he'll dribble it off his foot, out of bounds to the Mules. Nice defensive effort there by Henson. But we've got a 30-second timeout on the floor. We'll be right back. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glenn Sane. We realize the best advertising we have is when our customers tell them about their buying experience at Glenn Sane with price and service. We have an outstanding service and parts department that I think you'll be very, very proud of. Every day we come to work and look forward to selling our next GMC truck and have been doing so ever since my late grandfather, Glenn Sane, started the business in 1954. We invite you to come and see us and see why so many are buying from us. And God bless our troops. And we're back. And Lloyd, what do you think so far? Well, I'll tell you, Tyler, I would have uh, called Jill Iyer if you'd have said halfway through the first quarter it's going to be two to four. Uh, you know, it, Bernie usually gets a lot more offensive production early in the game than that. They usually come out uh, very aggressive offensively. That's and what um, we'll see if that isn't what uh, Coach Brad called the timeout about. Got to look to get something going. And ball deflected away by Pounds. It'll stay with the Mules. That's what we've seen out of Bernie this year. They get off to a great start. They get out to a lead and they keep it. That's their game plan but they haven't got out to a quick start like they're, they've used to in this game so far. And I tell you what, and that's a working hard. That's great defense, and uh, Jordan just flat out earned that one. Jordan McGowan with his first two points of the game, ties this game up at four. Pounds on the ball, gets it down to Vandiver. He'll work against Shipman. He's got a size advantage, up no good. I think he showed that size advantage there. He put Shipman to the floor there. Cameron trying to draw a charge there. We call that a flop. Quit flopping. <laughs> and taken away by Bader. He pushed it up the hill. Hill's going to go to the basket, and he can't get it to go. 
Hanson with the follow-up can't go. I tell you the one thing, uh, it, it's Bloomfield's playing some great man up, straight in your face defense. They're gonna they're gonna wear them out. Bryce Roger with a shot underneath, can't get it to go, but he'll be fouled. Looks like it'll be on Seth Hill. We've seen defense be there's, pretty good on both sides. Nah, you see there's no question. in the half court set, Bloomfield gets the stops and also gets steals. They push it up and it's Bernie getting in transition and stopping those transition opportunities for the Wildcats. So fine efforts on both ends. Well, Coach Hicks will game plan and prepare um, and give these guys a, a sheet and, and some things to study and do. And um, he's about as prepared on a per-game, per-opponent basis as um, in, any coach I know of in the area. He will get them ready for specific teams. And a foul on the rebound. That will be against, let's see here, Jesse Shelton, his first. Team foul number two for the Mules. Under two minutes remaining. Very low scoring first quarter. Henson Good. gets it taken away by Shipman from behind. Yep. Very defensive oriented, oriented first quarter here, Lloyd. And a turnover by the Mules, and that was good uh, getting into the passing lane by, that's Paul Fox into the game for the Wildcats. He got in that passing lane and forced a bad pass. I'll tell you this, Paul Fox, he's quite the athlete. He, he doesn't is. look it, but I tell you, he's really one of the good. best leapers on the floor right now. And, and an outstanding baseball player, really, really handy baseball player. Hits left-handed, can can hit for some yardage, too. <laughs> yardage. <laughs> Fox with the ball now over to Hill. He'll put up the deep three. Rims off. Rebound Rodgers. If I'm Coach Hicks, I'm noticing that Cameron Shipman's guarding Bader, and that's exactly where I'm going with it. McGowan on the drive. He'll be fouled on the shot. That's by Adam Vandiver. He'll pick up his second. Now with a minute remaining in the quarter. We might not hit double digits here in the first <laughs> quarter, Lloyd. <laughs> Jordan McGowan gets his first free throw. Bernie's not having their greatest free throw shooting season. Um, Jordan's getting them started off right tonight. McGowan's second shot up, good. He's got four in the game. Hits and a lob down to Bader, and he gets it go. Really good play. Set play, came down with that in mind. That's, that's a good call. And we've seen everything from Bloomfield being generated around the perimeter. A, a good look to go towards the basket with that lob. And down to 30 seconds remaining. We're going to do a weave out front to kill some clock. And Shelton will Ooh. spin it, go in the lane. He's going to lose it. That was sloppy with the pass, but what a great spin move. And we're down to 20 seconds. Seth Hill with the spin in the lane. Ten seconds remaining now. One last shot here for the Mules. We're down to five. Shelton goes around the pick. He's going to go to the paint. He's going to lose it. And it's going to be out of bounds off Bloomfield. It'll stay with the Mules with 2.6 seconds remaining. Shelton's maybe going to need to go ahead and shoot that ball, and Tyler. He's 
It's a little bit over passing. And the Mules get a good look. Matt McGowan with a three, no good. That comes an end to the first quarter. Not much of uh, offensive production here in the first quarter. Seven to six, the Mules on top of the Wildcats. We'll be back with your second quarter next. At Missouri Southern Healthcare, hometown healing means providing the best medical care with those small town touches for over 42 years. MSH offers a wide array of outpatient services and 24 hour diagnostic and emergency services, as well as inpatient care. Serving Stoddard County and the surrounding area with seven medical clinics, including Dexter Internal Medicine Group, Dexter Children's Clinic, MSH Surgery Clinic, MSH Family Medical Care, MSH Bloomfield Family Clinic, MSH Malden Clinic, and our newest addition, the clinic at Walmart. We're your neighbors, your friends, and your family. We're not just closer to home, we are home. First Midwest Bank of Dexter is proud to welcome Chris Geatley as Assistant Vice President and Loan Officer. Chris graduated from Dexter in 2005 and just completed his MBA in finance. He and his new wife, Maddie, are making Dexter their home. Please stop by the bank and let Jack, Ken, Donna, Mark, or Chris assist you with your next loan request. First Midwest Bank is a proud sponsor of the Dexter Bearcats. First Midwest Bank is a member of FDIC and an equal housing lender. And we're back with your second quarter. Mules open up with the ball. Guys are just real familiar with each other, offensively, defensively, and it's 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 tough to generate offense. And that's what we've seen here so far in this game. Good looks offensively have been hard to come by. And There's Jesse the shot Shelton we were talking about, Tyler. Just shoot it. Jesse Shelton with his first two of the game. I think as a player, it's it, and it's probably hard to get that concept, but he can't know how important he is offensively to to take that burden off. You know McGowan or Shipman or and and how much easier and better that makes it uh, offensively on your team. Meanwhile, a shot by Skaggs, no good, but he's going to be fouled by Jordan McGowan. That'll be his second, third team foul for the Mules. First shot up by Skaggs, rims out. Mitchell so far has stepped up and been that third scorer we talked about for Bloomfield. Maybe he's going to be that guy tonight. Can't get the two free throws to go. I'm on the edge of my seat, at Lloyd. We <laughs> might be hitting double digits here. <laughs> this may be the trip. I think it is. Jordan McGowan with an easy two underneath. Now settle in. This second quarter is bound to be a little more scoring. They're going to they're gonna figure out the legs are going to get a little tireder, and it, it's tough to play man-to-man -man defense that hard for that long a period of time. And Bader with a nice shot in the corner. He's continuing his good shooting. He's got four in the game. I'll tell you, that's a, that's a nice spot on the floor with him. We saw that against Dexter. He gets in that corner, and he nails it every time almost. Shipman with a runner on the right side, good. Well, Cameron's going to find a way to get his. That's This is definitely the pace that Bernie's easing toward. Deep three by Seth Hill. Can't get it to go. Skaggs with the offensive rebound and put back good. He's been the workhorse for the He's, Wildcats no down question. low so far. Six minutes remaining in the half. Ball over to Eves. All out to McGowan for a deep three. Rims off. Sammy Walker with a rebound. He's going to be fouled on the putback. Mitchell's been prone to a little foul trouble in the past. That's, um, that's his second foul. That'll send Sammy Walker to the line to shoot two. That's one thing Bloomfield has to do. They've got to seal off the boards as Sammy Walker makes his first free throw because, you know, anytime you get Jordan McGowan to miss a three-point, right. you need to seal that up and take and, it take and it down take advantage offense. of that. Yeah. Exactly right. Yeah. 
Walker's second shot up, no good. Strong rebound by Bader, pushes it up to Seth Hill. He drives the lane, kicks it out to Bader over to Henson. He'll pull it up and knocks it down. Nice looking two. Five and a half remaining in the half. And a push foul on the Wildcats. Adam pretty much blew that screen up. <laughs> Yikes. And that a bit is that Adam Vanderbrett. That's his third foul. Yeah, so. that's. We've seen the big men for the Wildcats get in foul trouble early on. And McGowan missing another three, but Eves is right there with a the putback. Yep. Did, uh, you know, that that kind of game against Dexter uh, gives Eves a lot of confidence in the, uh, especially within your conference. And a three point attempt with a foul underneath. And looks like it'll be against Seth Hill. And it is the right call. And um, there's no question he hooked and held him. Under five minutes remaining in the half. Bryce Rogers with the ball. He's going to get the ball taken away from behind. Bader on the drive. He'll go up the left side. No good. Rebound Rogers. And deflected away by Pounds. A good opportunity for the Wildcats in transition. Eves inbounds to McGowan. He's isolated underneath. Up and under move, goes up and good. That's a nice opportunity there for the Mules to get McGowan get, isolated get underneath. McGowan isolated underneath and watch what I say, Tyler, if he don't come out high offensively next on the next possession. And a nice up and under move by Hill. He can't get it to go. He's having a hard time getting it to fall early on. And Bryce Rogers in the corner, no good. Rebound Henson. He swarmed. And it's going to be a foul on Jesse Shelton. And Shelton will pick up his second foul. Team foul number four on the Mules. You can almost see that foul coming, Tyler, when the uh, frustration sets in a little bit. Four minutes remaining in the quarter. Ernie out to a six-point lead. Pounds with the ball over to Seth Hill. He's going to drive the paint. Goes up and no good. It'll be fouled by Shipman. Shipman will pick up his second. Good isolation move. I think you can tell Seth Hill wanted to get to the line on Definitely, this trip. He, uh, he's been out of rhythm early on. That's the best way to get, that's to get yourself no into question. a rhythm. Drive, get fouled, and get shoot some free throws. Seth Hill gets the first to go, his first point of the game. Second free throw on its way, good. Under four minutes remaining. Four court press and a zone press at that. Walker was so open back there. (laughs) His guys lost him. And Shipman with a three, no good. Rebound out to Shelton. And he'll put up another and no good. They have not found the rhythm from the three yet. Seth Hill, he drives it, and he can't get it to go. A nice look, a nice hesitation dribble. Looked like he might have passed, and that's what the Mules were expecting. It opened up for him, but he just couldn't convert. 
Three minutes remaining in the half. McGowan down to Park, uh, Walker. Can't get it to go, gets his own rebound. Can't get it to go. Matt Eves right there to put it in. There's the guy Eves. That six or eight or where is he? He's got six in the yep. game. And a charging foul. Charged with Seth Hill. And pick, he'll pick up his third. Bernie likes to draw that charge. Bait, um, bait, probably not the right word, but draws you into that uh, secondary defender waiting there. And um, who was that? Was that Walker waiting on him that drew that I foul? believe that might have been Sammy Walker on that Walker, one. yeah. Between him and McGowan, uh, there's not a lot of great driving opportunities in there and that, that you don't end up with somebody waiting on you. Right. Two and a half minutes remaining. Eves down to Walker. And it'll be a charging foul on the other end, committed by Sammy Walker. And was that Henson drawing the charge at that time? Uh, a little harder to see. If yeah, I, I actually think here. it was Skaggs, Skaggs in there. Skaggs might have yeah. been Skaggs there. That's what, exactly what Brad's telling him is exactly right. You cannot draw that down here and go down and stick your <laughs> shoulder through the guy down there and expect to get that call. And a deep three by Cowart, no good. Logan Cowart into the game. And good block, good block, block. By Matt Eves, but it's Pounds coming back away with it. Cowart with the, the putback. Boy, Logan picking up some trash there. Under two minutes remaining, still a close game. Bernie by four. And uh, shot put up by Walker, no good. And it'll be a foul. It looks like uh, it may be Sammy Walker. It was. And that'll be his second. Well, Bernie's really picking up some fouls they a long are. way from yeah. the basket. You know, especially hate to see that in bonus well, time. It, it, especially with your guy Walker, I don't want him 80 feet from the basket trying to poke away, you know, a clean rebound. And Bryce Rogers coming in for Sammy Walker. And Sammy Walker getting the foul trouble against the Bearcats. He, he didn't get to see a whole lot of playing time in the, in the second half, so they definitely want, want to refrain from that happening again. First shot up by Skaggs is good. He's got seven in the game with that free throw. Second shot, good. Well, you know, Tyler, uh, we said it. When when they find that third scoring option, they're, they're a good team. They're a mess to deal with. And, so far, Skaggs is not only that third option, he's leading the team in score in this first half. McGowan goes over to Shipman. He'll pull up the big three and gets the roll. Well, I know Shipman's glad to see that thing go yeah, in because he's really struggled from that, the outside the past few games. Yeah, that's pretty much easy. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Mitchell, you cannot make it that easy of a play. And that's one thing. It, it, it doesn't matter any kind of ball handler at any level. It seems like the dribblers have a hard time stopping if, once they make that pass. They just go right through. If he stops one step before that, he's got a little two-foot bank shop, and Jordan's flopping and nobody hit him. A nice crossover dribble by Shelton. He oh, puts it up. Oh, Good. that's tough. Very nice shot by Shelton. We're under a minute now. Bernie pushes this lead up now, to seven. This is a, a long minute for Bloomfield with uh, some people on the floor without Seth Hill that, that are, that I'm not sure Coach Hicks wanted to shoot within 10 seconds of his possession then. Henson can't get the three to go. We're, on, we're at 30 seconds remaining. Shipman with the ball out front, works against Pounds. 
Bernie working a weave here, trying to kill some clock. Yeah, they're going to they're going to settle for that last shot of the half. And we're down to 15 seconds. Down to 10. Shelton with the ball works against Fox. Crosses over, spins, and he's going to get fouled on the dribble. Five seconds remaining. That was a long 40 seconds of defense. and The foul be charged to Dylan Bader, his first. Team foul, oh, with over 10 team fouls for the Wildcats. So it'll send Shelton to the line to shoot two. Gets the roll on the first. Shooter's bounce. The soft rims here in Bernie. That's right. And second shot does not go. Henson on the drive. He's going to put it up at the free throw line. Rims off. And that brings it into our first half. The Bernie Mules on top of the Boonville Wildcats, 26 to 18. We'll be back with your halftime stats and discussion in just a few moments. Complete customer satisfaction is our number one goal at Allen Christian and Dexter. With Allen, Terry, Bruce, and our experienced sales staff, we make your buying experience simple. We can get you the right vehicle, new or pre-owned, at the right price. No gimmicks, guaranteed. Our selection of Buick and GMCs is second to none. Take a look at our inventory online, or better yet, in person. Plus, after the sale, we'll take care of all your service needs. You'll like the way we do business at Allen, Christian, and Dexter. Okay, you're hooked up and ready to go. New Wave knows you're excited about sports, so now's a great time to get connected with the Triple Play Package. Crystal clear TV, high-speed internet, and telephone for only $99.99 a month for 12 months. With New Wave Communications, you've got game. Hey, I'm Kurt Hillis at Lincoln Lacey Chevrolet. We've got a full line of GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick products. I'll pass it over to my Ford man, Charlie Thacker. GM's not your thing? Come check us out here at the Ford Dodge Jeep store. Check out my man Blake on the internet, LincolnLacey.com. If you don't have time to come down to Malden, check us out on cars.com or allthetrader.com. And if you need financing, I'm going to pass it to my man, Robert Sanders. And our ultimate goal here at Lincoln Lacey, no matter your situation, is to pass the savings on to you. So you're wondering what's the better deal, cable or the dish? Well, let's see how they size up. The dish has no local office, no ability to provide their own high-speed internet or phone for bundled savings, and can require a two-year contract with hefty early termination fees. Cable, on the other hand, has local offices, its own high-speed internet, and phone services with a lot of great features. New Wave Communications, there really is no better choice. Hi, I'm Jason. Hi, I'm Tyler Wagner of YHC TV, and I invite you to join us for the Sports Roundtable, Saturday mornings live at 10 a.m. for the first local sports show of its kind in Southeast Missouri and Northeast Arkansas. The show will include appearances from local athletes, coaches, administrators, sports writers, and many other sports commentators. Check us out on Channel 21 of New Wave Communications Cable or live on the web at YHCTV.com. See you then. And we're here at halftime between the Bernie Mules and the Bloomfield Wildcats, 26 to 18. Halftime score in favor of the Mules. We'll go over and ask some halftime stats real quick. For Bernie, leading score, Jordan McGowan with eight. Matt Eves with six. Jesse Shelton and Cameron Shipman both with five. 
and Sammy Walker and Bryce Rogers both adding one. Very balanced scoring for the Mules in the first half. Just as you would expect. Sure. And Bloomfield led by Mitchell Skaggs with eight, Dylan Bader with four, Aaron Henson, Seth Hill, and Logan Cowart all with three. What do you have to add? Well, uh, that, that's a huge eight-point run. I guess we'll call that. It was kind of an extended run. Extended, yeah. Um, but um, that's that's a big eight points in a 26-18 uh, point game. They did seem the offensive really came alive that second quarter. Uh, the guys seem to be offensively getting better looks, better cuts. Um, foul trouble starting to kind of creep its way into the game. Uh, you got to have Seth Hill on the floor for you if you're Bloomfield. And um, – Kind of that four, six-point lead went to eight there, and and uh, I know Coach Hicks is looking for that time to run off to get him back in the game. And you spoke to foul trouble. Both teams have experienced foul trouble in the games that they've struggled. That's right. And the game against Dexter Bloomfield right. had some of their big kids go to the bench, it's, and they had to depend on their guards. And Bernie, even uh, we've seen Cameron Shipman and Jesse right. Shelton be vulnerable to foul trouble, the main ball handlers for the Mules. So. That could play a role coming down to the end of this game. Who can stay on the floor? Well, there's uh, – it, especially when you count so heavy if, – if it's one of those top three that uh, – your top three producers. Um, one, one thing that does stand out is actually Mitchell Skaggs' performance, eight points in the first half, eight of your 18 points. That's a big deal, um, especially if you can get Dylan Bader on track or Seth Hill on track. That becomes a big, big deal for you. And should be a great second half. We'll see how Bloomfield, they they uh, kind of left the door open for Bernie to I extend did a that bit lead. There. Not, not a great finish to a uh, pretty well played and drawn up first half form. Right. And Bloomfield will open up the third quarter with the ball. We're going to really try to get Dylan Bader uh, the, some of the offense cycling through his hands, I bet. Seth Hill with the ball. Bernie in a matchup set, it looks like. Does look like a matchup, yep. Seth Hill on the drive. Can't get it to go. He just can't get it to drop in this game so far. He's being aggressive, staying aggressive towards the paint. But can't get it to drop here early on. And a dump down pass to Walker. Shipman now with it, back out to Shelton. Seth Hill applying the pressure. Shelton with a spin move, dumps it down to Eves for an easy well, two. Really nice pass from Shelton. Is that Eves again? Yes, he's got eight in the game. And a nice scheme there for the Wildcats. Get, Skaggs gets some space, but he'll be fouled on the shot. Tell you what, that matchup um, has basically worked all game. Uh, Skaggs against Walker in there offensively. When Skaggs has been on the floor, um, he's been an offensive threat. And that's Sammy Walker's third foul, so we might see him go to the bench for a few that, minutes. You've got to take him out this early in the third. Mitchell Skaggs can't get the first to go. We're under seven minutes. Remaining in this third quarter, Bryce Rogers in for Sammy Walker. And I know he's frustrated because he, he, he played just maybe a minute or two in the second half against Dexter, and it looks like it's, yeah. it's going to start off the second the same way here in this second half. Skaggs gets the second to go. Give a little bit of a 1-3-1 one, one type look. And a dump down pass deflected away. Shipman will drive it again on the baseline, and he throws it off of Pounds. Basically had nowhere to go, so the only shot was to throw it off a defender. And McGowan for a deep three, rims out. Rimmed out is right. That touched all sides of the rim. Right. And Pounds will drive it, spins, gets it out to Seth Hill for a three. He can't get it to go. McGowan with a rebound. Brings it up the right side, works against Henson. Back to a straight man there, constantly switching defenses. 
And a loose ball. McGowan picks it up behind the back, step back for three, knocks it down. Oh, that is a tough, tough shot. Probably his toughest shot from behind the arc, and a he nails step it. step back three, I, I agree. That was the toughest shot he's put up all game. And we've got a timeout on the floor. We'll be right back. Hey, I'm Kurt Hillis at Lincoln Lacey Chevrolet. We've got a full line of GMC, Chevrolet, and Buick products. I'll pass it over to my Ford man, Charlie Thacker. GM's not your thing? Come check us out here at the Ford Dodge Jeep store. Check out my man Blake on the internet, LincolnLacey.com. If you don't have time to come down to Malden, check us out on cars.com or allthetrader.com. And if you need financing, I'm going to pass it to my man, Robert Sandage. And our ultimate goal here at Lincoln Lacey, no matter your situation, is to pass the savings on to you. And Lloyd, we're talking over the break. McGowan knocked down that impressive shot. That was his toughest look from behind the arc. He had to go behind the back and a step back, and he gets it to go. So maybe that's what he needs to see a tough shot like that go in to get it get on a roll. You can uh, shoot that shot at home when you wore out that shooting gun trainer that, <laughs> that they do. So get a little better feel for it than, than you and I maybe think. And ball taken away by Rogers. Shipman pressured. He'll pick it up, gives it up to McGowan, up and under move. Oh. Good. McGowan now has 13 in the game. Jordan worked them there. And Bernie on a nice run, pushes their lead up to 14. It was eight after two. And a shot put up by Henson, blocked away by McGowan, pushes it up, no one there. And it looked like Shipman was taking a different route yeah. than McGowan expected. <laughs> That's what we see in football. You know, you see Manning, those <laughs> Manning had him on yeah. the deep route, and he <laughs> ran the half moon. <laughs> they even run that. I think we ran that in seventh grade <laughs> backyard football. Under five minutes remaining. Bloomfield. It did look like a play those two had ran several times together right. in the past, and Jordan's wondering why he pulled up on him. Seth Hill drive it. He goes to the paint. He can't get it to go, but he'll be fouled. It's almost what Bloomfield needed was to get to the free throw line and see the ball go in. They've, like, they've only got one point so far right, in the third that, quarter. That lit on the basket down there. Um, and, and this is the way the game started for them, real struggle offensively, and you're going to have to drive to break that open. Penetration is, is, is your key to doing that. Seth Hill can't get the first to go. The foul was on Matt Eves, his first. Team foul number two on the Mules. Second shot, good. Seth Hills now has th three in the game. I even missed one somewhere, so. Brass Rogers sets a pick for McGowan. He pulls up inside the three-point line, no good. Rogers with the rebound, kicks it out to McGowan. He'll drive it, and he'll be fouled on the drive by Mitchell Skaggs. That'll be his fourth. Yep. Real veteran crew, you're not going to trick these guys very much, Tyler. And looks like we have a technical foul. And he just got foul. himself a technical foul for his fifth foul. See, that's that's no good. <laughs> just as you Six, mentioned, nobody nine, nothing yeah. gets by these officials. <laughs> wow, and I was just in the process of saying that. Al McFerrin has probably reffed about 2 million basketball games in his career. So um, that's just. And what's the worst yeah. part about yeah. that is that was his fifth personal there, foul. There's so his fifth foul. The front court takes a blow for the Wildcats. Yeah. And, and another thing about, you know, it's a pet peeve of mine and is an official when kids do that, of course. But, um, you know, now your energy's gone and they get the ball right back and there's so so many you know ways that goes downhill on you and there's going to be a timeout on the floor full timeout for the wildcats we'll be back 
Hi, I'm Jason Comfort of Countywide Engineering. And we're back, 4.15 remaining in the third quarter. And Bernie's pushed their lead out to 14, Lloyd. So what do you think so far here in, in the well, second half? I mean, and I can say this about Mitchell because I know mom and dad and the boy, but son, you're having the <laughs> – you're the leading scorer as well. So the, um, that's going to obviously create, you know, an offensive gap that the uh, Bloomfield's yet to figure out tonight. Uh, low scoring affair for them no matter who you're playing and what you're doing, 20 points late in the third is, um, you know, it's a struggle for points. Yeah, not a bad game for Mitchell Skaggs. He finished with nine points, and he was Had an outstanding the, the, game the interior going presence for the Wildcats. So it's, uh, the, the Wildcats will miss him coming down the stretch. And the Beals now with the ball. And let me throw this twist at you too, Tyler. Um, he's also picked up three fouls on Sammy Walker collectively through the game and you know that that's a big deal and he's been by far their most aggressive player underneath and now uh, Paul Fox comes into the game for Seth Hill Seth Hill picks up his fourth foul so we're running yeah. into some foul trouble here for the Wildcats see coach Hicks is frustrated at him and rightfully so um, their, their shoulders are down, their heads are down, and they're just. Nice dump down pass, Matt Eves. Matt Eves has got 10 in the game. He just seems to be at the right place at the he, right he time. He does. You, I'm telling you, going into next week, he is coming alive here at the right time. That, that's an important uh, set of games for that young man. And Shipman open for three in the corner, knocks it down. Bernie working in transition, getting the open three. And we're going to have another timeout by the Wildcats. And with 3.17 remaining in the third quarter, Bernie pushes its lead up to 19. We'll be right back. Okay, you're hooked up and ready to go. New Wave knows you're excited about sports, so now's a great time to get connected with the Triple Play Package. Crystal clear TV, high-speed internet, and telephone for only $99.99 a month for 12 months. With New Wave Communications, you've got game. And we're back, and that, we saw a nice transition bucket there by the Mules, Lloyd, and... It seems like, you know, the point of the game where Bernie likes to get out and run and, you know, put this game away, and they're looking to do that here in this third quarter. That's two really good timeouts by Coach Hicks. I think, um, again, he feels that same momentum that we've all kind of subtly felt shift here, and uh, that's about all you can do as a coach because you can't go out there and shoot it and make them, you know, quit fouling or reaching for you. You've got to uh, – Try to try your best to quell that momentum. And this is what Bernie's been so good at. When they get a lead, That's it, and it doesn't even have to be a big lead. It could be a five to eight point yeah. lead, and it just seems like it's so difficult to close that gap. It was eight uh, about five minutes ago. I mean, strictly clock time. Yeah, we had an eight point lead at halftime. Right. They pushed it up to 19 with three minutes now to go in the third quarter. And a runner by Dylan Bader can't get it to go. Under three minutes now. McGowan working against Henson. And a dump down to Eves with another easy two. And that guy. He's got 12 in the game, six in the quarter.
Oh. Everything's a struggle right now, Tyler. It's just there's your guy. That's it's a good play, Bader, good isolation. Yeah, get a good ball movement. Gets Bader underneath. Isolated one on one. He draws the foul. That'll be against Jordan McGowan, his third. Gets the first to go. Gets the second to go. He's got six in the game. Bloomfield had a similar game earlier in the year that um, they really struggled offensively from the floor. Reminds me a lot of the same look of this. And Bernie calls the 30-second timeout. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Complete customer satisfaction is our number one goal at Allen Christian and Dexter. With Allen, Terry, Bruce, and our experienced sales staff, we make your buying experience simple. We can get you the right vehicle, new or pre-owned, at the right price. No gimmicks, guaranteed. Our selection of Buick and GMCs is second to none. Take a look at our inventory online, or better yet, in person. Plus, after the sale, we'll take care of all your service needs. You'll like the way we do business at Allen, Christian, and Dexter. And we're about to get set on the other side of the timeout here. 2.09 remaining in the third quarter. These Bernie. guys, um, you call Hicks and Botch about letting you pay bills, or that's like 86 timeouts have been called. <laughs> yeah. <like. That's laughs> Botch doesn't want to let, you know, slip away here that's in the right. third that's, quarter. Uh, he saw just a little inkling yeah. of uh, – and a pass down to Bryce Rogers. Can't get it to go. Gets his own rebound. And a kick out to McGowan. Wide open for three. He can't get it to go. Just can't get the wide open right, ones yeah, to go tonight. You know? He's not had his best shooting night, but. He should have went between the legs behind uh, the back. And fell then, away. And put it There's up. no difference. You got you to gotta step back on that three. And a nice drive there by Dylan Bader. Minute half remaining. And McGowan trapped. He gets down to Shelton, down to Rogers. Shelton puts it up in the paint. Good. And that's what Shelton needs to do. He gets in the paint, yeah. and he looks to pass more yeah. than he I, should. I but agree. He, he, he may, may have made it one too many passes there, but he did good he by getting it getting back and back, shooting. Right. Yeah. And Vandiver with a nice move underneath. His first two of the game. Under a minute remaining in the quarter now. Get past the shipment. He fakes it, drives it. Oh, good. Oh. That was a nice, nice fake. Nice move. He went Playground by two move, defenders. Tyler. Perfected on the uh, bad streets of Bernie. One thing about playing for Coach Botch, uh, Coach Carnes, uh, Paul Hale, that Bernie legacy, uh, these guards don't think for a minute they don't have the green light when they, you know, get a gap or, or feel the love. It's um, And that's why guys like Cameron Shipman and stuff do the damage they do. And what makes them so good when they get out in transition, they can, you know, they can run to basically the corner. They, the three-point shooters like to go to the corner, and they make that – Cross court pass, just as we just saw, and that brings the defenders out to the perimeter, and then they can make that fake right. and get inside and open up lanes. So that make, that's very effective. Bader gets is that two free throws to go on it that? Was, yes. Okay. And we're down to 30 seconds. Paul Fox takes it away, up to Bader. He'll step back for three. No good. And Walker with a rebound. We're down to 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Bernie enjoying a 17-point lead. They'll surely go for one shot here. We're down to yeah. 10 seconds. You know, and and, Man, and another easy bucket <laughs> there by Matt Eves. They are wearing them out on that driving pitch. Put it up, Logan. And a deep 
shot by Logan Cowart, rims off, and that brings it into the third quarter. 47-28 lead for the Bernie Mules. We'll be back with your fourth quarter next. At Missouri Southern Healthcare, hometown healing means providing the best medical care with those small town touches for over 42 years. MSH offers a wide array of outpatient services and 24 hour diagnostic and emergency services, as well as inpatient care. Serving Stoddard County and the surrounding area with seven medical clinics, including Dexter Internal Medicine Group, Dexter Children's Clinic, MSH Surgery Clinic, MSH Family Medical Care, MSH Bloomfield Family Clinic, MSH Malden Clinic, and our newest addition, the clinic at Walmart. We are your neighbors, your friends, and your family. We're not just closer to home, we are home. First Midwest Bank of Dexter is proud to welcome Chris Geatley as Assistant Vice President and Loan Officer. Chris graduated from Dexter in 2005 and just completed his MBA in finance. He and his new wife, Maddie, are making Dexter their home. Please stop by the bank and let Jack, Ken, Donna, Mark, or Chris assist you with your next loan request. First Midwest Bank is a proud sponsor of the Dexter Bearcats. First Midwest Bank is a member of FDIC and an equal housing lender. You know, and we're back with your fourth quarter. Mules has possession. Talking about the county tournament coming up at Bloomfield and both of these teams playing four nights at Christmas. And um, there's been a lot of, a lot of years when uh, Bernie's been good that they've played six, eight, games uh, when a district tournament cycled through up there, even nine or ten games at Bloomfield. So um, don't think any any one of these three, that's a uh, that's a big advantage uh, going to the friendly confines of Bloomfield Gym. All right. Logan Cowart with the foul. Shipman goes to the line to shoot two. Can't get the first to go. The second shot goes for Shipman. He's got 11 in the game. Bader with the drive, and he'll be fouled, looks like, on the shot. That was a nice defensive play there by McGowan. It, it he was. He did what? Mr. McFerrin saying he kind of body checked him, then a nice clean block. So that'll be his fourth. Bader gets the first to go. And Bernie can afford to have a few in foul trouble now, but Gallon goes to the bench with four. Bader gets the second to go. Bader's definitely picked up the scoring load here. Ball deflected away by Coward. It'll stay with the Mules. Seth Hill applying the pressure to Shelton. And nowhere to go. Throws yep. it away to Bader. Good, good defensive presence. Yeah, Shelton's had a good game getting into the paint, ball handling, and a nice effort there by the Wildcats to keep him from opening up those passing lanes there underneath. Bader with the drive. Stumbles and Stumbled, loses yeah. the ball. Matt Eves pushes it up the left side over to and wide open underneath is Eves once again. And we've got a quick timeout. We'll be right back. I'm Danny Ford, owner of Glen Sane. We realize the best advertising we have is when our customers tell them about their buying experience at Glen Sane with price and service. We have an outstanding service and parts department that I think you'll be very, very proud of. Every day we come to work and look forward to selling our next GMC truck and have been doing so ever since my late grandfather, Glenn Sane, started the business in 1954. 
we invite you to come and see us and see why so many are buying from us. And God bless our troops. And we're back. And, Lloyd, we were talking about Matt Eves over the break. He's got 16 in the game, and we don't think he's missed a shot all night. And they've come all between the blocks. Really just handy at catch. And that's not the easiest thing to do to, to catch that ball on the move. You're tucked up under the goal. There's defense around. He's he's a nice player. Is he a junior or a senior? He is a junior. If, um, we have him listed as a 6'2 junior. That Eves and uh, Shelton combo and that uh, – Load of sophomores coming. That's uh, they're going to be uh, a mess in practice, bucking for playing time next year. And the good thing about Eves, he works well. It's one thing to get easy buckets, but get your yourself in good position to get an easy bucket. Uh, it's Bader with a two out of man with a timeout, quick two, and the ball thrown away by Bernie. Turns it over to Bloomfield. As I was mentioning, it's getting yourself in position to get those easy baskets because as you see Jesse Shelton driving the lane it's okay how do I read him H how he's dribbling who uh, what defense is picking him up to get me in position to get a good scoring opportunity and he does that very well and Shelton Bernie classically if, if you made me define one of the things that they do really good it has always been uh, since Anthony Bean used to wear us out doing it, penetrating and kicking out, penetrate and kick out. And they've just always found ways and guys that can just do that exceptionally well. Now, hitting the shot makes that look awful good. but And a nice steal by Henson. He takes it coast to coast for the layup. Did, did you get to play against Bean? I unfortunately, unfortunately. did. Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> He, I, I hear the stories. I hear he, he was just something he else. He and Terry Dawson, I caught a young Anthony Bean, as a matter of fact, as a as a freshman. Um, I can remember him playing in Kansas State and watching him on TV. Oh, but, he was the real deal. Man. And a nice move underneath really, Bobby Gallon. Really He'll be fouling the shot. And, and, you know, I was old enough to remember Antonio Sykes at Portageville, right. having a great career there at Portageville, winning a state championship all throughout his career, and Jamie Booker. So I got to grow up with watching them as young players, but I wasn't quite old enough to remember Anthony Bean, and they say he's uh, far away the best guard that's ever come through. Well, as far say. as ball handling, yes. the, you know, the green twins that followed him a few years later about that same area you're talking about were probably better offensive shooters they were the ones that did all that crazy three-point shooting but um as far as handling the ball and just flat out locking down <laughs> defense he was he was nasty and a nice drive by Seth. zach pounds no that was hill was it Seth, Seth hill yeah okay yeah pounds isn't even on the floor right now ball thrown away by the mules and Bloomfield keeping it respectable, 16 points, trying to make a final run here. Five and a half remaining in the game. Dump down to Vandiver. He goes up, no good. Rebound McGowan. Oh. Shipman on the drive, wow. all the way. I. I thought I saw that fixing to happen, Tyler, and then that's a block. And that's Sammy Walker picking up his fourth. And that's Seth Hill to go to the line to shoot two. And I can, you, you mentioned the Green Boys here from here at Bernie. And I can remember back in the Bloomfield Christmas tournament back around the 91, 92. It's probably right around that time, right. maybe 93, that they turned people away That's from right. that final game. And what an atmosphere. And the thing is, you know, that was not only the, you know, the Bloomfield Christmas tournament. A lot of – and that had – that – match up there a lot of times determined the state champion. Oh, absolutely. That 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 kept 
Bernie from unquestionably winning a state championship, that Portageville run at that very same time. That, that was the same year that uh, Van Buren, who didn't lose a game away from the Bloomfield Christmas Tournament, uh, settled for fifth place there. Outstanding, outstanding run of basketball. And meanwhile, Seth Hill converts two free throws, and Bernie gets fouled. Working against a full court press. Seth's starting to uh, get into the scoring column. And the foul will be against Aaron Henson, his second. Team foul number seven for the Wildcats. Sends Matt Eves to the line to shoot a 1-1. Aaron's had some tough duty tonight. He's drawn Jordan McGowan on the defensive end when they've went man-to-man. That's not an easy chore. A lot of chasing. He, Jordan McGowan runs, ar- runs around. He does. And, uh, around those screens very well. And we were talking, uh, it might have been a few games ago here at Bernie. And we, I, I used to talk, or uh, I used to hear defenders that used to try to guard uh, Pete Maravich back in his day at LSU, and they, they described it as trying to chase a fly <laughs> in a room full of refrigerators <laughs> in the dark. <laughs> and Shipman on the drive, can't get it to go. Over to the Wildcats. 439 remaining in the game. Similar drive by Shipman as before, just couldn't finish. And Bader in the shot in the paint, no good. Well, we've seen Bloomfield convert on those shots in the past few games. It right. just hasn't been there tonight. No, it's not. It's, it's been a uh, cold offensive performance. Ball kicked out to Shipman. He'll drive it. And it'll be fouled on the dribble. That'll be against Seth Hill, and Jeez. that'll be his fifth foul. Tough shooting night for Seth Hill yeah. with seven points, seven points in the contest. Tried to get it generated uh, by a lot of driving and stuff. Can't uh, Definitely can't fault the effort. Great senior basketball player, played a ton of um, AAU basketball and things to get himself better. And, um, you know, that's going to happen. And, you know, he – he did the right thing. He, he wasn't shooting from the outside no. very well, so he took it to the paint, tried to draw some fouls, get to the free throw line, and you know he uh, he took the right route but just couldn't get it to fall tonight. Cameron Shipman gets two free throws to go. Well, there's no question it's a big reason why you find yourself, you know, 20 points down at Bernie with that with, with those totals, with that stat line later. Four minutes remaining in the game. Henson works against Shipman. Henson on the drive. Nowhere to go. Gets it out to Pounds. Pounds dumps down to... uh, That's Bader underneath. Shipman almost with the steal, but he'll commit the foul. Shipman with his third foul. Sends Bader to the line to shoot a one-on-one. Dillon's got about all his points here in the second half. Bader gets the first to go. He's done most of his work from the line tonight. He's 7 of 7. Of 
Second shot up, good. Eight for eight from the line tonight. And They're Shelton just, on the drive. He's such a uh, tough team to press as well. You know, when, you, when you've got to try to make up 20 points. Um, shot up in the lane by Henson, no good. Vandiver there with a the putback. And we've got a quick timeout, and we'll be back in 30 seconds. So you're wondering what's the better deal, cable or the dish? Well, let's see how they size up. The dish has no local office, no ability to provide their own high-speed internet or phone for bundled savings, and can require a two-year contract with hefty early termination fees. Cable, on the other hand, has local offices, its own high-speed internet, and phone services with a lot of great features. New Wave Communications, there really is no better choice. And with 3.18 remaining in the game, Bernie enjoying an 18-point lead, and you can pretty much uh, point to the start of the third quarter right. where Bernie yep. jumped out to a bigger lead from its eight-point lead at halftime, made it double digits, and Bloomfield just never could uh, cut back into that lead at that point. They never seen to recover from halftime. No, not at all. Um, and, you know, probably in large part due to whatever game plan and scheming that the coach Botch has done this half. They've, they've kept Seth Hill completely out of the game offensively. Um, uh, Bader's getting some points from the line and stuff, but really having to, you know, to force things offensively to make that work. Not a lot of fluid motion. No, nothing easy tonight at uh, Bernie for Bloomfield. And that's what Bernie's done very yeah. effective, effectively this year. They don't make anything easy. Yeah, it's just, it's just such a chore and such a struggle. And um, it, as I mentioned, either at break or last time, here we go trying to press. And, um, you know, there's your, there's your result of it. And not a bad effort there by Rogers. Gets the ball thrown off a Bloomfield Wildcat, and they'll retain possession. It's funny, Tyler. The more you, <laughs> the more you watch these guys. It, I swear, when I see Bragg call those out of bounds plays, I know what's happening. And McGowan there with a the putback. McGowan with 18 in the game. We're under three what minutes. A, what a worker B he's been too. Yeah, his, his 18 hasn't uh, come as easy. Usually he gets oh wide God. open shots and he There's knocks them down. But we've the, seen other him do than a lot. the step back three, we've kind of <laughs> poked a little fun at. It's been a very workmanlike 18. Yeah, we've been used to seeing him hit three, yeah. four, three point shots in the game, and he's only hit I one three point a, shot um, tonight. Uh, not, not maybe at my best and settle around the 18, 20 point mark. Shot up by Henson is good. And the foul was on Cameron Shipman, his fourth. They're shooting their free throws well tonight, Tyler. That's, um, you know, well, there, there you go. <laughs> Spoke too soon. But yeah, they have a shot. But wait until after line. they shoot the free throw, Lloyd. But <laughs> <laughs> Two and a half minutes remaining. In the game, Shipman works against Fox. Deflected away, Shipman regains it. And another quick timeout. Brad Bosch doesn't like the offensive scheme, so he's <laughs> going to set does. something he, up. He's yeah. giving him that eye. You all have four heads look. And we'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Tyler Wagner of YHC TV, and I invite you to join us for the Sports Roundtable, Saturday mornings live at 10 a.m., for the first local sports show of its kind in Southeast Missouri and Northeast Arkansas. The show will include appearances from local athletes, coaches, administrators, sports writers, and many other sports commentators. Check us out on Channel 21 of New Wave Communications Cable or live on the web at YHCTV.com. See you then. And we've got 2.16 remaining in the game. And before we went to the break, uh, Lloyd, we were just joking around that 
Brad Bosch doesn't didn't like what he saw in that offensive possession, and that's that's been the Bernie Mules this year. They they stay yeah. disciplined at both defensive and offensive ends of the court, and, and it doesn't matter at what well, point in the game. That's they're right. Going to, they're going to take and each possession seriously. He Brad really knows that with this bunch, and that means they're not as deep and they're not as deeply talented as they have been with with that last year and the year before last. So um, you, you just got to do things more right. You got to do them right all the time or you end up with, um, you know, Twin Rivers losses and things. And the inbound to McGowan. Works against Henson. And he'll drive it, throws it to Rogers in the corner, just a little too high, turns yep. it over to the Wildcats. Like Brad's going to blame that on him. <laughs> That's what uh, Coach always used to say. Yeah. If it touches your hands, That's you right. should catch it. Yeah. Well, that, that, that includes the fingertip, it, you know, or the fingernail. You've got to come down with it. <laughs> it was catchable, I will have to agree. And Henson with a shot, no good. Under two minutes remaining. And Bernie will work a weave here. It opens up for McGowan, kicks it out to Eves. Shelton with a drive, wow. he'll go in for the easy two. That's a nice, that's a nice play, Tyler. Yeah, it, you know, you, you expect Bernie to pull it out, kill some clock, well, and you know, they kind of expected that, but Shelton saw the opening, took it. Well, and, and you know, in, in that regard, that's exactly what you run that for is the layup, and so when you see that lane open up and the C's part there, you've got to take it. And they need that aggressiveness out of Jesse Shelton. There's he's, no question. He, yeah. He's really picked up well That's from well, uh, Jake Welch last year, creating things in the paint for others. And when, when he really when he figures out by the end of this year that when he's in the paint, he's creating for himself That's right. as well. He's that's going to add another dimension to their That's offense right. because he's done very well getting into the paint, dishing off to others, kicking out to McGowan and Shipman for their open shots. But once he figures out he's in the That's paint right. and they're converging on those passing lanes, it's going to open things up for him. That's going to be dangerous for the Mules coming down there's, to the end of this year. Too. There's been two or three times that I felt like, as well as you, that he probably passed one too many times. Not the – Worst thing a kid in the can do in the world on a basketball floor, but um, I, I think that shot goes in the air as he gets better at it. Yeah, I think that's just the process of going There's out no question. throughout this yeah. year. It's going to open up more for him. Varsity level basketball, and he's doing that right now. I mean, through through the course of January, that's when you figure that stuff out, and the the good players get better, and the ones that don't tend to kind of mire down in mediocrity. And we've got some substitutions in for both teams. And Thomas Forkham has been out for about eight months with a knee uh, surgery and rehab and seeing his first action maybe this season. And Kerry Hughes with the ball, the 5'7 senior over to Seth Walters. Hughes back with it under a minute now. And Shelton will drive it, looks to dump it down to Robertson, Marcus Robertson. Hughes brings it back out to Shelton. We're down to 30 seconds. Walters dumps it down to Jacob Clayton, puts it up, uh, no good. Deflected two, away by f <laughs> That's two big guys there. f standing at 6'7". He is long when he spreads out. And shot put up, no good by Austin Cooper. And that brings it into our game tonight, 64 to 43. The Bernie Mules on top of the Bloomfield Wildcats. And we'll be back with your final statistics and discussion in just a moment.
And we're with you post game here between the Bernie Mules and the Bloomfield Wildcats. We've got a final score of 64 to 43. Bernie on top of Bloomfield. And we'll go over with some quick stats here. Individual scoring for the victorious Bernie Mules. Jordan McGowan leads the way with 18. Matt Eves follows up with 17. Very impressive performance by Eves tonight. Cameron Shipman falls with 13. Jesse Shelt with 11. And Bryce Rogers with 1. And for the Bloomfield Wildcats, led by Dylan Bader with 16, followed up by Mitchell Skaggs with 9. Seth Hill with 7. Aaron Henson with 5. Adam Vandiver with four, and Seth Hill with, or no, it's Logan Cowart with two. Anything to add? No, uh, you know, Tyler, we had plenty of time to talk about it there at the end of the game, but uh, just never recovered from the halftime hangover, um, and and probably more so attributed to uh, what Bernie did to him. You know, took him completely out of the offensive rhythm, the ability for Bader and Hill to get on track offensively for Bloomfield is just too important. Um, and then when Mitchell Skaggs fouled out, at the time he was the leading scorer and a real important cog in that wheel. Um, so a long night on the road, and again, we talked about it early. It ain't the first team that's come in and uh, found it hard to win in Bernie High School in January. That's right. This is one of the toughest places oh, to play. No question. And Bernie always plays well here, and the atmosphere they have and they have the support they have from their community, you know, it's second to none. It, you know, in our area in the Stoddard County, that added dimension of playing in the, you know, in the conference they came to play. And, you know, Bloomfield, as I said in the pregame, that well, they're not that far off. No. You know, they, no. They, Coach they got, Hicks is not going to be pleased with that effort. The fans are not pleased. Well, you know, crap, the kids aren't pleased with that effort. You know, Seth Hill's going to go in in the morning and wear it out, and uh, they're going to get back on it and try to figure out Friday night and then uh, get ready for that tournament next week, which at this point in the year is the most important thing they've got going. Right. And, you know, looking forward to the tournament. Bernie, the number one seed, Bloomfield, the number three seed, and Dexter in between at the number two seed. And it might match up with Bernie and Dexter in the semifinals if the seeding plays out fun. right. Right. And – uh, you know, Bloomfield will have the opportunity on their home floor. The tournament is at Bloomfield this year to, you know, make a run. And, you know, it's uh, they've got that to their advantage. They right. can, you know, get some momentum and make a run for that Stoddard County tournament title. But, you know, shifting to Bernie, they've been consistent all year. They've had a few hiccups in the road with Twin Rivers losing two out of three to them. But, you know, that's the blueprint to bring to the game, play very physical, uh, very physical defense, be very disciplined on offense, and that's where Bloomfield kind of got away from their scheme. They turned the ball over. They did. Anytime you turn the ball over against a Bernie team, right. they ta- they capitalize on it. You know, Bloomfield had that same similar turnover-ridden first half as well up at Dexter. Dexter didn't make them pay for it like Bernie did here tonight. And, um, boy, once it uh, started steamrolling on them in the third, like I said, it went from – eight to 19 in a five minute period on the clock. And that'll pretty much do it tonight. Bernie, very impressive showing over the Bloomfield Wildcats, 64 to 43. Be sure to tune in for some more games. We've got plenty of games left on our schedule, uh, including the county tournament. We plan to do that live. Uh, The approval is coming just in any time now. Uh, We've been doing that for quite a few years there at Bloomfield. We're looking forward to doing it again this year. Tune in to the final uh, night of the county tournament, Stoddard County Tournament, and that'll be next Friday night. I believe that's right. Are next we, Friday night. Right. I believe that's the 28th. Um, uh, don't don't try to read a calendar in your head, son. <laughs> but uh, it's coming up next Friday night. We're looking forward to it. Big week. Yeah, sure is. And be sure to tune in to YC Sports for another game. It's coming near you, and we look forward to bringing you another game right here on YHC TV. And for myself, Tyler Widener, Lloyd Rice helping out tonight. We sure appreciate him. Haley Stockton on the camera tonight. And Rick DePriester, uh, gosh, Rick DePriest as our producer tonight. We appreciate his efforts as well. With all those timeouts, uh, Rick working overtime. Yeah, yeah, sure is. Worth worth twice he's paid, Tyler. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) We're going off there now. (laughs) But uh, that's that's all we have for you. We sure appreciate you for tuning in. Tune in for another game right here on YHC Sports. Have a good week, everyone.